Hello and welcome everyone. Today I want to rank every single album by Anatema or Anatema. Whatever, whatever we want to call this band. So I'm going to rank every single album from my least favorite to my most favorite. A long time ago I actually made a video with no commentary just showing the album, a piece of one of the songs and that's it. But now I'm going to do this in commentary so so let's just get into the video, get into my lowest position. Falling Deeper is at the bottom, look at that. The, art the artwork I find really beautiful and I like this art direction, it's similar to We're Here Because We're Here and uh, Weather Systems. But I'm gonna say it's the least interesting album artwork out of the other, out of all of these three. Uh, so let's talk about you know, the album itself. It's undoubtedly the most unique anat Anatema album. Fully orca orchestral compiled of reworkings of older songs in a truly beautiful fashion, I gotta say. So the songs are crestfallen. It just shows you what you should expect from the rest of this album. Sleep Insanity is a good second song and follows the same exact vein as the first one. If you're not really paying attention to the track list, you might not even know where the first song ends and the second one starts. So yeah, they really fade into one another. Uh, Kingdom is a slower but with a higher tension song. The states are different and the atmosphere is heavier. Next up is the song They Die, which is a shorter, more melodic song. Everwake has great instrumentals and the vocals sound perfect. Je faint une promesse. French motherfucker! Uh, it's a very sweet song, I'm gonna say. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of these songs later on, on the other albums. Some of the songs in here are not really a particular song from the past, like Kingdom. I can't recall any other Anatema song called Kingdom, so I guess this is like a new new song in this album. So, yeah. Je Faint une Promesse is a very sweet song. Uh, between this and the original version, I think I actually prefer the original one. Eh, but whatever. Alone is a great song, but I honestly prefer the original rendition of this work. Uh, With the Gods is another slower and more relaxing song. And we have Sunset of Age. Sunset sunset of age which closes the album is is one of and is one of the better songs in this release so this is also the shortest anatomy album being shorter than 40 minutes there's no other album like this and it's not a bad album their catch arrangements and melodies are beautiful but the album itself is not that interesting especially when you compare to everything else anatomy has released so yeah at the bottom of my list not a bad album though if you want to listen to something very orchestral, very relaxing, listen to this, you won't be disappointed. Next up we have Serenades. This is the only Death Doom album from Anatema, unless you consider uh, Silent Enigma. You, know, you could actually consider Silent Enigma a Death Doom album as well. So yeah, this and the second album, the debut and the sophomore are the two Death Doom albums from the band. Something you really love is to compare four different bands' debut. Uh, those bands are Anatema, Opeth, Catatonia, and Cradle of Filth. I find these four albums very similar. Anatema is more shifted towards death doom and gothic metal. Opeth is a combination of progressive death metal with black metal. Catatonia is more of a mixture of death doom with black metal. And while Cradle of Filth is a mixture of black metal with gothic metal, I just like to pair these four different albums together. They are very similar in my mind and I thought of making a video talking about these four albums but I don't think I'll ever do that. And since I already released um, the Catatonia ranking, the Opeth ranking, I have the whole Cradle of Filth ranking recorded, I just am waiting for them to release the damn next album I've been waiting for so long. So yeah, those are the four bands that I find really similar, they all started in the 90s, so yeah. Let's talk about the songs I guess. Lovelorn Rhapsody is the first track and it shows how different this album is from everything else Anatomy has ever done. I do like the Death Doom sound with these gothic elements, you know, makes this album very unique and different from the other ones. Sweet Years is probably my favorite song from this album. The singing and the guitar sound really good. 
Then we have Defend on the Promise, which I talked about in the previous work as well. It's much more mellow and very different from what came before in this album, and the rest of the songs are also very different from it. This works more as a romantic interlude between songs, and I do enjoy it. I enjoy it more than the version in Falling Deeper. Uh, next up we have They Will Always Die. It's more like the first two songs, but a bit longer and slower. Sleepless is next and it is an amazing song. I man, Sleepless is amazing. I find that this stands out a lot from the other songs. I enjoy the bass sound the bass sound and the vocals whenever the guitar kicks in and whenever the guitar kicks in. The, the vocals I just find so different from the rest of the album from the rest of the album. You know, this is more more clean but not totally while the rest of the album is the deep growls, the deep growl vocals. So it really makes this one, this song right here, sound very different from the rest. Uh, Sleep Insanity has some really amazing chord progression in the guitars, and I like how they they lead the song forward and all the loops that they do in the song. Um, after that, we have Scars of the Old Stream. I di completely forgot that this song existed. <laughs> there are some songs in this debut that I completely forgot that they existed and I only noted the names when I wrote them down to write the script for the video. So this is one of those songs that I totally forgot that existed. It's a very different and rather unexpected song for this album. This is an interlude but the sound effects in it are very different and crazy so this song, although I didn't, didn't remember it existing, I did find it very interesting. So it's a good song. After that, we have Under a Veil of Black Lace. It's a long song, and honestly, it's not different from anything else that we already talked about. So, yeah. Uh, Where Shadows Dance, another song that I completely forgot, is another shorter interlude track, and coming to think ab about it, if most of the songs in this album were shorter like this and the other interludes, like... Uh, I already forgot the other one. Uh, the one I talked before, the other interlude with the interesting sound effects, and also the fate on the promise. I think this whole album would have been much more interesting if all those long songs were very short, like 2-3 minutes, this album would have been much better. Uh, one of the few cases where I feel like if the songs and overall album were shorter, I would have enjoyed it much more. So yeah, normally like longer stretches of music, but in this case, I think if they did the opposite, it would have come out much better. Uh, so after that, Eternal Rise of the Sun keeps the same sound of the album, but uh, it has its own identity and it's a separate audio from this work. I like the song. Coming to the last two songs, Nail to the Cross 666 is the most black metal-ish song Anatma has ever done. <laughs> this is a bit out of place considering what the band did later on in their career and considering what they would become known for. And the last track is The Dreaming, it's Dreaming the Romance, which is like a far better ver version, I almost became a Texan, version. It's a far better version of the song Untitled from Queen's Maiden Heaven. So in comparison to that song, this one I like a lot. Now if you were com if you were comparing Untitled from Queen and Dreaming the Romance from Anatomy, I think Dreaming the Romance is a much more interesting track. But it don't, doesn't add much to the whole album, so yeah, whatever. So overall very different album from anything, anything else Anatomy has ever released. This is far more gothic and feels like a product of its time. But I do enjoy the latter Anatma much more than what they did in this work right here. So let's just move on to the next item on this list. Or item on this list, not item. Item is in Portuguese, goddammit. Item. Alternative 4 is next. I like the artwork a lot. Beautiful, really. I like this Angel Astronaut. Or Astronaut? Astronaut. Angel Astronaut. And the fact that we can see the moon landing on his lens. I really like the artwork, but one issue I have is the title, Alternative 4, I just find this title so stupid. So yeah, that's my only issue with the artwork and the title of the album. Shroud of Shroud of Falls introduces the album. It's a short track, but I 
do like it a lot. Then after that we have Fragile Dreams, which is the actual first song and also the best song in this whole album. I like the lyrics, the vocals and the instruments and just what they say in the song is just absolutely amazing. I really like the song. Uh, MT follows it up and this song... Alright, I'm gonna say, when he says like, oh, I'm so empty, I just find it so cringe. <laughs> So Anatma has this really emotional sound to them and the earlier albums especially were a bit more depressing and I never felt like they were cringe in any moment or that this whole emotional feel to it was forced but in this song I just find the song cringe so yeah empty it's a cringe song I, but I like it you know I still like this song. Lost Control is next and it took me a long time to actually like this song uh, not my favorite song, but I do like it. So something that I find interesting is that with a few albums from Anatma, I had to listen to them a lot of times to actually get into them. This is one of them. Uh, the first few songs, the first half of the album, I really enjoy, but the second album, the second half of the album, I don't. So we're gonna get to that. Uh, the next song is Reconnect and has off the start amazing guitars and I like the singing, the rhythms and the melodies another great song. Inner Science has got the most emotional song in this album and they did an amazing work in this song so yeah good song. Next up is the title track Alternative 4 which although the title is very stupid I really like the whole atmosphere that they made in this song. The song is very experimental and different so yeah really good song although the title is completely stupid. Uh, next up we have Regret and this is where the album just goes down for me and I stop enjoying it. Um, I don't know, it's a forgettable song I guess. After that we have Feel and another forgettable song honestly. And if the album were to end with Destiny, I think it would have been much better. No, Destiny is one of the songs in the second half, but it doesn't. The song still, there are still some other songs and guess what? They are Roger Waters uh, covers. Amazing, completely amazing. Uh, your, your, it's hard to pronounce this title. Your possible pasts is yes, a song from the Final Cut. Needless to say, the worst Pink Floyd album, and I don't like the song at all. Uh, next up, we have one of the few is another shitty The Final Cut song, and honestly, I prefer when Vincent Kavanagh. Is the vocalist? I completely forgot his name, but Vincent Ka Kavanagh. You know, when I started studying German, I just got to pronounce the, some words in this different, strange way. You now it's because I'm learning German. Ich studiere Deutsch, so some, some, uh, con some, uh, let's say, collection of vowels or consonants. Yes, consonants, of course. So some combinations of consonants. I just have to pronounce it the German way. And Vincent Kavanagh is just one of those. That's probably completely wrong, but whatever. I just prefer when he does his original material instead of trying to copy Roger's singing. And man. Roger singing of all people, like, he knows how to write music, but he's not that great at playing it. So, I don't really like this. Better Off Dead next up and Better Off This Album Goodbye uh, Goodbye Crew World Yes another Pink Floyd cover But at least from a more bearable album The Wall when Roger wasn't fully controlling every single step of the other band members And yet I'm uh, gonna say this is the best worst song from this album So yeah congratulations So overall Roger Waters covers or what pulled this album down, I just prefer the first half of the album and the original material much more but I don't like Roger Waters I really like Pink Floyd like one of the most undoubtedly one of the most influential and best bands of all times but I don't like Roger Waters so yeah I don't like the second half of this album and this is why this album is solo for me because of those stupid covers so let's just move to the next item on this list the Silent Enigma is next. Uh, I like the artwork, it represents a sorrowful sound that this album has. And, well, as I said, this album has a very sorrowful sound. <laughs> so let's talk about the songs. Uh, 
Restless Oblivion showcases the gothic and depressing sound that this whole album has. I would say that this as well is the best song of the album. Uh, after that, Shroud of Frost. So yeah, Shroud of Falls and the previous uh, item. Shroud of Frost and this album right here, this item. So it's a depressing and I love the heavy music sound, how heavy the music sounds and how profound the lyrics are. The instruments are played, 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 God damn it, are played really well. Halfway through the song, they do something very experimental and different, making this album more atmospheric. And I enjoy what they were trying to do there. It was really fun. Alone is a very atmospheric and different song, and I really like the direction they went in this one. But it does work more as an interlude track on this album. Uh, after that we have Sunset of Age, is a more similar to we found in the first album, but I enjoyed the song, the guitar sounds really chunky and are played really well. After that we have Nocturnal Emission, a, it's more like the previous song, but more experimental. Cerulean, Cerulean Twilight is like a less memorable version of the long songs that came before. Uh, the Silent Enigma is next, is the title track, and very sorrowful song, the instruments and vocals can really get into that exact feeling they were trying to portray in this album. After that we have A Dying Wish, which is another song, longer song, and I feel like this one is executed much better than Cerulean Twilight. Black Orchid is an instrumental song, I quite like this one. It works more as transition into the last few songs on the album. And those are the Silent Enigma Orchestral. It's more like what we would get later on on Falling Deeper, but this is more of a gothic iteration from well, that song. And the album ends with Sleepless 96. Which is a banger of a track, it was in the debut and it is present in here as well. And the amazing song, absolutely love it. Uh, overall, I feel like the atmosphere in this album is is better than the songs, but still has some good songs and really great moments. If you want to listen to some gothic, sorrowful doom metal stuff, this is it. So let's move on to the next album. The Optimist is the band's last album before they officially disbanded the band, so yeah, that's really sad. Uh, but I do like the artwork, it goes along with a fine day to exits, and since this album is supposed to be a uh, continuation of what this of the story that was presented in that one, it does work well, you know, like a sequel. Uh, the first song, 32.63 North, 117.14 West, is the introduction track. And they call back to we're here because we're here. Uh, these coordinates lead to a beach where the picture was taken for the artwork for a find it to exit. So that's really interesting. Leaving it behind the first track, uh, real track. The guitars and the sound effects are interesting, but this one is not my favorite song from the album. Endless Way, Endless Ways is a far better song than the previous one. I prefer everything about it, the instruments, the effects, the vocals and the lyrics, most of all. Such an emotive and memorable song. The songs get, uh, this song gets even better as it gets closer towards the end. The instruments get much more intense and I really love what they do in, with that. Uh, the Optimist, the title track. It's just as emotional and memorable as the previous song. I like the lyrics, the lyrics and the vocals as well, the song structure and the sound of the instruments. After that we have San Francisco, a good instrumental. And I wish there were a lot other anathema songs like this one. Uh, after San Francisco we have Springfield. It's not that memorable, but something I like about this album is the sound of rain in the background and all the other sound effects, such as the train at the end of the previous song or the cityscape at the end of this very song. I was able to hear a police car in the background and those little detail details make a lot of difference for the whole work. So yeah, those sound effects, absolutely love them. After that, after that we have Ghosts, it has some nice vocals but the song is not memorable at all. And then I and then the song Can't Let Go has a more rhythmic and melodic loop for the duration of the song. Also the vocals are nice. This somewhat reminds me of Damnation by Opeth, but without all the darkness from that album. And the song ends with a little fun reference to a fine day to exit. Uh, after that, we have 
Close Your Eyes, which sounds like a jazz song. I have nothing against jazz, but I don't like this song. <laughs> Wildfires is a really good song to have at the end of the album. I found all the effects and the instruments and those chimes at the end. Very nice and enjoyable. Back to the Start is the longer track and also the final track. And from what I gather from this album, the main character who escaped away years ago in a fine day to exit came back to the people that he once knew many years and uh, many years after that event took place. Maybe the people that made him escape away from his life, uh, what for him that made him wish for something else. And he finally came back. So he came back to those people. And we know that it's been a lot of years because his voice sounds much older than the voice that was present in A Fine Day to Exit. So I really like this whole story arc that these two albums present. But honestly, I'd rather listen to other works by Anatma rather than The Optimist. Uh, the callbacks in this album, they just make, make me feel like, why am I listening to this when I can listen to We're Here Because We're Here? or a fine day to exit so yeah not a bad album but they released better works and i'm gonna talk about those better works now eternity is next i love the artwork this angel in the middle of space just look incredible and it goes along with the themes and songs of this album really well so sentient is a quite long introduction track exactly three minutes and it sets up the gothic and melancholic feeling of this whole album after that we have angelica which follows and this is honestly one of my favorite anatma songs the melodies sounds and atmosphere of this song is on point the vocals and lyrics are just great as well the beloved is next and this is a more depressing song the vocals the guitars and sounds are very emotive after that we have Eternity Part 1 and Part 2. Part 1 is a very solid song, I love everything about it, even the glam metal synths that we have at the beginning, while Part 2 is more of an atmospheric ambient song rather than a straight up metal song. But I like the atmosphere it sets up for the next song, which is Hope. Star it starts with the narration of a preacher or a priest or someone I imagine is a religious leader, but not in the bad sense, alright? Not a cult leader. And we're led into the song, which is also great. Uh, and after that, we have Suicide Veil and Radiance. Those two are good songs, but I don't have much else to say about them. Uh, Far Away is also a good song, but there is not much else for me to talk about it. Uh, Cries on the Wind is next, and is the song I enjoyed the least in this album. It's not a bad song, by it. why am I talking about the Texan? It's like I'm from, I'm a character from No Country for Old Men. It's like a bad song by any means. It's just one song I don't find as great as the others. Well, let's go back to my normal voice. Ascension is next, and you could consider it the last song, since the next one swelling up don't really make a big difference in the greater scheme of things. But yeah, we have some other songs. Far Away, Acoustic. Uh, I prefer the non-acoustic version of the song. Then we have Eternity Part 3, closes the album, and the trilogy of Eternity songs. Uh, the version I listened, the Spotify version, has Angelica. Live in Budapest 1997, a bonus song, and the song being played, as I said, is one of my favorite Anatomy songs. But the audio quality is so bad, so why listen to this? It's like listening to the original mixing of Cruelty and the Beast by Cradle of Filth. Why, why do that? Listen to the remistress version, much better. So, yeah, overall, first side of the album is amazing, as I said. Angelica, one of my favorite Anatomy songs. But the album in itself is mm, yeah, inconsistent in quality, I'm gonna say, uh, whatever. Uh, there are other better albums, so let's talk about those other better albums right now. Natural Disaster! Alright, so this artwork, there's just one thing I don't like about it, and that is the fact that the sky is all red, and we have this very grey pond at the center with a little boat, and I mean, the sky is red, so the water which is reflecting the light should also be red. If that little detail were to be fixed, I would love this artwork, but that just bothers me so much that the sky is red and the spawn does not. <sighs> but whatever. 
Harmonion has great keyboards, uh, they're playing this amazing effect in the background, the singing the instruments are also, they have a, such a good harmony. Balance is the second song and the effects are very different, something else is the fact that I always thought that this album had a much bigger focus on vocals than other Anatma albums. Maybe that, uh, you know, this more emphasis on vocals could be also pointed towards We're Here Because We're Here and the Weather Systems. Those two albums also have a very heavy focus on the vocals. So Closer has really interesting percussions and the vocal effects are very crazy. Uh, next up we have Are You There? And oh boy, this song is so emotional, I love the instruments and especially the vocals, the lyrics are perfect and the way they are sang is just even more perfect. This is surely one of my top 5 or maybe even top 3 best uh, favorite Anatma songs, like up there. Not even Anatma songs but my f one of my favorite songs of all time, just amazing, amazing song and wow. Just listen to the song, alright? Childhood Dream is different, a experimental song, and the title is literally what happens in this track. So, yeah. Pulled under at 2000 meters a second. Oh, they're using um, the Imperial system? No, the Imperial, the metric system. The Imperial system is what the stupid Americans use. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't use Miles, they're stupid. Uh, so, yeah. Pulled under at 2000 meters a second. Well, actually, Anatomy is from Great Britain, from what I know, so yeah, he would be using the correct uh, metric system. So, yeah. Pulled under is the most popular song on this album, and it is also a very intense, fast song. Natural Disaster, the title track has amazing vocals, and as I said, this whole album gives me that impression that the main focus of the music is the vocals. And the lyrics are as well just emotional and as always with this band. Flying is the most popular song on this album. Is it flying or on pulled under? Well, I guess it's flying. What do you want me to say? The vocal the vocal work is amazing, the instruments are extremely well played, and the whole thing is again so emotional. Especially I especially love the what I assume to be a bass guitar towards the tail end of the song. Just an amazing sound coming from the right side of the headset, and when the song is closer to ending, it gets more quiet and moves to the center. I really enjoy that. Electricity is a slower and a bit more acoustic song, quite a relaxing one. And Violence, the last track, is 10 minutes long and it's a good way to end this album. It keeps up that emotional feeling, but ultimately it does not do... It does, just doesn't stand out very much for me, so yeah, it's a good song to end the album. But this album does have some intriguing songs, Childhood Dream, Are You There, the title track, but other than those three songs, I just feel like the other work that they released are better. So yeah, I'm just gonna move on to the next positions, so let's go. Distant Satellites, the recording is already over 30 minutes, hopefully I'll cut it down a little a little more for during the editing but man this band like I intended on releasing this video like December 10th or whatever I listened to an editor for over a month not because I didn't yeah, actually because I didn't listen to music that much during December I was doing other things but yeah I intended on releasing this video a long time ago but you can see the video is pretty long so I have a lot to say I also intended on releasing Turn Siberian Orchestra by Christmas, but I guess I will have to leave that for mid January. So, yeah, Christmas special a month later. So, yeah, I plan on changing the way I make videos. Uh, with I already started doing that with Turn Siberian Orchestra. Instead of writing down notes for every single song, I will only write down general notes and when I have something special to say about the song in specific, I will write down so this song has that, that and that instead of the way that, I'm, that I wrote down the notes with Anatema. But well, whatever, let's get to the next one. You already seen the artwork. Distant Satellites. 
the album artwork completely beautiful and the message of this old album carries is just beautiful so yeah last song part one extremely emotional and completely incredible song i love the vocals lyrics all the instruments and the drumming those string instruments at the end add a lot to the song after that we have the last song part two she's like untouchable part two a more chill back and more focus on the female vocals and again the lyrics and the message just like an arrow through your heart uh, next we have this uh, dark is descending is again an amazing song and this time I don't have much else to say but the piano and the vocals are simply out of this world 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 after that Ariel just like this is the previous song emotional but I prefer those other songs eh. this last song part three is definitely the weakest part of the song but that doesn't mean that it's a bad song I still enjoyed it and Atma finally self-titled song after 30 years uh, the beginning has some really interesting part with keyboards, I believe they are. This is a more experimental song as it evolves, more elements are added in until the songs get more intense towards the end. Uh, You're Not Alone is a shorter and more experimental song. This song is also very fast. Firelight is an atmospheric interlude and I really enjoy what they did with the song. It sets up the mood for the next song and the closing of the album. Distant Satellites is up there as one of Anathema's best songs. The percussions and the whole song structure is so good. After that we have Take Shelter, it's a closer track and again, very emotional and memorable song. It starts more calm and relaxed and as it goes it gets more intense until the crescendo and then the ending of the track. And this is definitely the best post Weather System albums. album. Uh, the Optimist, as I said. It was filled with callbacks and I just rather listen to those callbacks instead of listening to The Optimist. But this album, it's really good. It's a really good post-metal album if you want to listen. So I would recommend this album for you. Listen to Distant Satellites, really good release. And let's move on to the next one, which might be a little bit controversial, but whatever. We're here, because we're here. I like the artwork a lot, it represents the themes very well, and I find it quite ethereal and beautiful. Thin Air, the first song, is definitely the best Anathema song. It is my favorite work of theirs, and I just feel like the rhythms, the melodies, the sound of the other the sound of the instruments, percussions, vocals, and the stru structure of the song, just literally everything in the song is just perfect. So yeah. Thin Air, my favorite Anathema song. One of my favorite songs of all time as well. Summer Night Horizon, or Horizon, Summer Night Har Horizon is Anatomy's be second best song. The vocal harmonies that they reach in this work are just perfect, and I love the lyrics. Dreaming Light is the next song, and it is a slower, more melodical song. Anatomy has a great ability of making beautiful, emotive songs, as you just said many many times and this song is a good showcase of their ability next up we have everything and all right this song is just like the previous ones but worse i don't like this song that much after that we have angels walk among us it has great vocal line lines but they're honestly the best thing about the song i'm gonna say after that presence Follows the previous songs, and I find this a bit forgettable to be frank. Simple Mistake is actually a great song, I like the message, and I like where, what they do in the latter part of the song. Get Off Get Out, I don't like the song, just get out of my sight. Universal is a long and quite emotional song, very beautiful song to have the tail end of this album. And to close off we have Hindsight, which is a worse version of Internal Landscapes, we're gonna talk about that song later on. So. In case you're wondering, the reason why this album is so high is just because of Ten Air and Summer Night Horizon. The other songs, they don't live up to the hype. They just don't live up to the hype. So yeah, if those two songs were in this album, this would like be at the bottom of the list. Like literally at the bottom of the list. Maybe not even ahead of Falling Deeper. So yeah. Yeah, a lot of people probably will hate this that I don't have this album as number one, but whatever. Let's just move on. Uh, and also, something else is that I listen to Weather Systems before I listen to We're Here because we're here. So maybe if I did the opposite way, 
the opposite thing, listen to this album first. This could have become like much higher and would have enjoyed the songs of this album much higher. But that's not what happened, so let's move on to number three, which was a big surprise when I started listening to this old discography again, so let's go. A fine day to exit. I like the artwork, it shows really well what this album is about. Running away from your life, your problems, and starting anew from scratch, going everything from going away from everything you know and you despise. Who doesn't feel like doing that? Exactly that once in a while. I know I do, but yeah. Uh, a Fine Day is an amazing instrumental intro to this album. Absolutely love it. And it releases the first song with vocals and it sets up what the rest of the album is going to be. I find this album much more alternative rock rather than progressive metal from their most of their releases including the early gothic metal sound. So yeah, this album I found it also very different. Uh, some of the other albums are more similar, some of their other albums are very different like Falling Deeper. And then we have this one which it, it you can tell that this is anathema but it has its own identity, its own sound, so I really like that. Leave No Trace is next and this song, this song is that song you should listen under that specific feeling, as I said, this is the album where you feel like going away, escaping and leaving no trace, you know, leave no trace, haha, <laughs> fun, fun pun. Upcoming next is Underworld and I would just like to point out again that this album has a very different sound from the rest of Anathema's discography, as I said, much more alternative rock oriented. Something I just love about Anathema is how emotional their music can be, as I said many times. I love Catatonia, They're, they have that depressing sound, but I'm, I sort of had second thoughts upon listening to this album. Uh, something that I haven't pointed out is that if you watch that video I made a long time ago, ranking Anathema. This album actually was my least favorite album, like it was at the very bottom of the list. But after we listened to the whole discography, I discovered that this album is absolutely amazing. I was a bit put off by the alternative rock sound at the beginning, but the more and more I listened to it, like upon releasing the whole discography, this is the album I literally came back to the most. So yeah, it grew up a lot higher on me. Pressure is maybe the most memorable song from this album, not exactly my favorite, but still amazing song. Panic is such a beautiful song, I absolutely love it, and it's quite a fast and somewhat aggressive song, much more direct. Breakdown, Breaking Down the Barriers might be my favorite song from this album, but that's a tough de decision to make. Most of the songs in this album are literally perfect, so yeah, that's ha hard to decide which song is better. Looking Outside Inside is a more um, calm, more relaxed, but still works great in contrast to the previous one we just listened to. The next title, the next song is the title track, A Fine Day to Exit, which is good as well. It keeps everything that makes this album interesting and still has its own identity along the other songs. And the album ends off with Temporary Peace, which is a nice closing track. Being 15 minutes long, it has three parts. The normal beginning, the experimental mid half, and the bonus secret song at the end. So, yeah. This album right here, definitely the one that grew up the most on me. So, I highly recommend this album if you want to listen to some progressive metal, somewhat influenced by alternative rock from the early 2000s. I highly recommend this work. But we have two other albums to go through my number two and number one. Once I talk about my number one, we will, you will instantly know what my number one... Well, once I talk about my number two, sorry, you will instantly know what my number one is. So, let's just go. Number two is Judgment. I absolutely love this artwork, the title goes along very well with it, and it gives me the impression that the music is something, something much bigger, that it has a wider significance. And also, purple is my favorite color, so the color correction of this artwork is perfect. Deep is the first song and introduces the album, it shows you the heavy and emotional sound of this work. This album is overall more pessimistic and depressing than was Anathema released after it. So that's very well reflected on the lyrics and the themes portrayed throughout this album. Pitiless is the second song and probably my favorite song from this album. The vocals are great and I just love the subject matter and the themes that they talk about as I well mentioned in the previous song. 
Forgotten Hopes, Forgotten Hopes is the next song and I love how sometimes you can't even notice when one song, one song ends and then it starts. This is the Anatema album where it feels like the music never ends. Most of the songs in here fade seamlessly into the next song. I really like that. Uh, after that we have Destiny is Dead. It's more of, a, of an interlude that separates these first few songs before leading up into the second half of the album. Make It Right starts this second half of the album with a very beautiful song and I really like the bass and the sound effect it has. It rhymed. Goddamn. One Last Goodbye has some of the lyrics the most heavy and meaningful lines in this album. Absolutely perfect. After that we have Prisian Moonlight, has a very notable piano and the female vocals are really good. Title track Judgment is next. Is next, and other than being a great song, something that really calls my attention how the song just suddenly ends and sort of cuts itself. That's if I like that. Don't look too far is another at first more mellow emotional song. It's absolutely amazing, and I also enjoy the vocals a lot. To that we have Emotional Winter, which sounds a lot like Pink Floyd. Uh, but the song. No, I like Pink Floyd a lot, but the song I don't find it as interesting as some of the others in here. And when I say that this song sounds like Pink Floyd, it's not like the alternative for uh, Roger Waters' Pink Floyd. I'm talking about the good Pink Floyd, alright? So, yeah, that's what the Emotional Winter uh, reminds me of. Wings of God <laughs> reminds me of <laughs> 007 for some damn reason. I, I, guess, I guess it's the bass, the bash, probably. Anyone, anywhere, and where? It's a very emotive song, and to be present in the, here in the tail end of the album, just so we can make this ending feel more sensitive and emotional. And the final track is 2000 and Gone, an instrumental, and man, I love to have this song as the closing piece for the album. It just ends things perfectly. Maybe if I had this, if I had listened to this album before I listened to number one, it would have become my favorite. If I ha uh, had got, if I had gotten into Pink, not Pink Floyd, if I had gotten into Anatma by this album, and not number one, probably this would have been my favorite album. But you know, there's only one left. You know what that album is. So let's just talk about my number one. Weather Systems. Uh, this could even be considered my favorite album of all time. A long time ago, I released a top 50 best albums of all time. And this was my number one back then. If I made the list again, maybe things will have changed, but who knows. Perfect ad artwork, the thing that intrigued me into listening to this album was the artwork. And after listening to the music, the artwork only got better. It literally represents the songs perfectly. Just perfectly. This, as I said, was the first Anatomy album I ever listened, so it really sets up uh, the standard I had for the band when I got into the other albums, and that's maybe why I didn't enjoy the other albums at first, because they weren't as good as this one, but I learned to enjoy them in their own way as I listened to them. So, Untouchable Part 1 is a perfect song, just like all the others in, the al in this album. The acoustic guitars sound so good, the vocal harmonizations are on point, and the other instruments are played masterfully. Untouchable Part 2 follows the emotional beauty of the first song, and I find this one more mellow and slower, but I prefer the first song a little bit better. The Gathering of the Clouds is just masterful instrument work, just perfect, uh, and the vocals are a little bit experimental as well. This whole work, this whole album actually is more avant-garde and experimental, I would say. Lightning Song is next, and it's a combination of the intensity of the instruments with the, emotional, uh, with the emotion of the lyrics, and the vocals make this another perfect song. Sunlight, another calmer, more relaxing song, I love this one, extremely well mapped and uh, mapped out and executed by the band. After that we have The Storm Before the Calm. Calm. Why am I pronouncing like I've been for the past 30 days? I literally do not speak English at all. Like after those Half Life videos, I didn't. I recorded a bunch of Age of Empires videos and I completely did not speak English, so that's maybe why my voice sounds so weird, but whatever. 
The Storm Before the Calm is another crazier, more experimental song, and I just like the song a lot. It's the longest song on the album. The beginning and the end is less interesting. I want to say this is the least interesting song on this album, but still perfect, just perfect. The Lost Child is another really great song. I like to pair this with The Storm Before the Calm, like the this sort of go along. Eternal Landscapes is the same thing as the song Hindsight from We're Here, but good. I prefer this one because I listened to this one first. Maybe if did if I did it the opposite way, listen to We're Here because we're here first, I would have enjoyed Hindsight more. But that's not how things went. So a perfect emotive experimental album. As I said, this is maybe my favorite album of all times. Back then, when I made the top 50 albums, it was. But nowadays, I'm questioning myself. Maybe Dope Smoker from Sleep might become a number one. Who knows? Uh, who knows, really? Maybe Less Fair Deal Gone Down by Catatonia might be my number one. Yeah, who knows? But, well. That was my ranking of every single Anatomy album. This video, the recording is over 50 minutes, god damn it, why did I have to write so many notes on this album? I learned my lesson, so first I did not write down a script at all, then I started writing down the script for every single song on every single album, and I noticed that the videos were getting too long, like this one, I have over 50 minutes of recorded footage, so with the next band that I'm gonna rank, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I'm just gonna write down notes on the overall album, except instead of writing down every single song, so for rankings I, I'm gonna do that, but thinking back now, I think it's the better choice for me to, when I review like a single album, I'm gonna write down notes on every single song, because it's a, it's a shorter uh, video by nature so yeah when I release videos talking about albums in specific I'm gonna write down notes on every single song and when I make out rankings or when I talk about a complete discography of a band I'm gonna write down just notes on the overall album rather than every single song so yeah that was my anatomy ranking I hope you enjoyed this video if you watch through all of this I think the final the final product product will be maybe 40 or 45 minutes long longer than my catatonia ranking look at that so yeah i hope you enjoy this video if so subscribe like the video until my next time until my next video <laughs> see you then